The deal announced today puts people to work building this pipeline right away and creating good jobs. This deal and this pipeline will un unlock investment in our oil sands because we are now on the path to getting full value for our energy resources. And this deal and this pipeline will help us build up the things that matter to working families like schools and hospitals. Our work in this government to get this pipeline built started actually three years ago. From the very beginning, we said that good jobs for working people and meaningful climate action can and indeed must go hand in hand. Or to put it another way, any climate change plan that ignores the needs of working people is a plan that's doomed to fail. And any economic plan that ignores climate change is setting our businesses, our kids, and our future generations up to fail. We know that we can tackle climate change and still protect our good energy industry jobs. This commitment to working people and our environment has driven our strategy in this government from day one. At my first meeting with all of Canada's premiers, we got provinces and territories to agree on the need for new pipelines by signing the Pan-Canadian Agreement on Energy. Not everyone stuck with that, but nonetheless, we got them all to sign on. We worked with all Albertans to bring in the most comprehensive climate leadership plan on the continent, capping oil sands emissions, phasing out harmful coal emissions, putting a price on carbon, and attracting record investment in renewable energy here in the province of Alberta. We have traveled the country speaking to business leaders, workers, investors, environmentalists, academics, and more, building the case for why Canada needs new pipelines and why this pipeline is unlike any other. We've invested in winning the hearts and minds of all Canadians, making sure everyone understands the importance of our energy resources. And this work has paid off. We have moved public opinion from coast to coast to coast. First, making Canadians aware of this project and then convincing them that it is, in fact, in the best interests of this country. So when the B.C. government then stood in our way and when we were concerned that the federal government wasn't doing enough, we got people's attention again. The wine ban worked and we introduced Bill 12. And we continued to fight and win in court with 16 out of 16 court cases decided in our favour. So when Kinder Morgan issued its deadline on April 8th, our government responded immediately. We committed that certainty would be assured. And we committed that we would do whatever it takes. And we indicated absolutely that we would meet that deadline. So today we are delivering on those commitments. As of today, this is the most certainty that this project has ever had. That certainty is absolutely critical. And I want to thank the federal government for working with us to get to this point. After all, this is not a conflict between provinces. BC took a run at the authority of the federal government and the interests of all Canadians. So we challenged the federal government to step up, assert its jurisdiction, and do whatever it takes to give investors the certainty that they need to see this project through. In return, the federal government asked Alberta to be part of the solution. And as you know, we were ready to do that. We said we would be happy to work with them as long as three conditions are met. First, construction needs to resume immediately. Second, there needs to be certainty that the project will be completed. And finally, Albertans need to see value for any investment that they make. I am happy to say today that all of these conditions have been accomplished through today's announcement. By purchasing the project, the federal government now has the power to make sure that it goes ahead. Alberta has contributed to today's announcement by investing or announcing that we will invest up to $2 billion to an indemnity pool that will help ensure that the project goes ahead. 
and that investment will be payable only once oil begins to flow through the pipeline. And at that point, our investment will be converted to equity, equity, maximizing the return for Albertans. My friends, Canadians have come together, and we've brought them together. There are those who said we could never make this happen, some who hoped it would fail even for their own political interests. But we know that's not the best way forward. There is work yet to be done, but Alberta, this is a major step forward for each and every one of us. We said we would meet the deadline. We've met the deadline. We said we would provide certainty. We are providing certainty. We said we would get the pipeline built, and we are getting it built. Yeah. And so we will not stop until the job is done. And in the meantime, to all Albertans, pick up those tools, folks. We have a pipeline to build. <laughs> I'll take questions beginning with those media who are here in person. And if you are asking a question, we ask you to please use the microphone located to your left of the cameras. Premier, you said that uh, the construction will begin immediately. Define immediately. Um, uh, people are at work probably today doing what needs to be done to uh, resume construction on schedule. I assume that we'll see something within the next couple of weeks or so. But everybody is at work doing what needs to be done to carry on with the summer schedule. Uh, today, Premier John Horgan has said this doesn't really change his concerns. You know, he's still going to be doing what he's doing to basically delay the pipeline. So how does today's deal uh, remove him as an obstacle? Well, I think, uh, you know, there's a couple things here. Uh, first of all, uh, at the very outset, one of the strategies, I think, that was being used by the federal government, separate and apart from what actually happens in the courts, is the idea of creating uncertainty and scaring away investors. And that, that's what we saw on April 8th. And what we said at that time, uh, in response to Kinder Morgan uh, addressing this, or outlining this concern about investor uncertainty, is that they may be able to mess with Texas, but they can't mess with Alberta, and it may well be not Ottawa either. The fact of the matter is, is that the investors who are behind this pipeline now will not back off. So that's the first thing. The second thing, though, is that uh, by the, as a result of the pipeline having been purchased by the federal government, they uh, have a form of crown immunity, which actually uh, makes a limits the degree to which uh, provincial laws would apply to the project because it's a federal project now. And so uh, I suspect that Premier Horgan will be going off to get legal advice and I can't uh, pre uh, pretend to know what advice he will get, but certainly some folks would suggest that their reference case will have less relevance than, uh, than it did before today's announcement. Morning, Premier. Uh, regardless of what happened today, there is still opposition to the pipeline within some circles and communities in British Columbia. In this time of reconciliation, how do you think this is going to impact relationship with ind Indigenous communities that do not want to see this project proceed? Well, you know, as, as we saw um, over the weekend, we actually saw a number of, of rallies across BC and we saw a number of spokespeople from Indigenous communities who actually want to see this project go forward because they see that it provides benefit to their communities. And so I think that within Indigenous communities, there is a, a difference of opinion, uh, much as there is uh, across uh, all of Canada. But overall, we've seen that opinion shifting towards getting this pipeline built because we understand that it's the safest way to move the product, that it comes with uh, a, a, a continent and perhaps world leading climate change plan that includes as part of it a cap on emissions. Um, and because we are all committed to ensuring that the pipeline is built safely, the product is shipped safely, and that the coast is protected. So we've always said that we share BC's concern about protecting the coast. And uh, and the other thing of it is, of course, is that going forward, uh, we are also happy to, look, to work with and Indigenous communities about opportunities that might exist for them in the in the uh, the uh, 
years to come as it relates to this pipeline. So how likely is it, do you think, that uh, those who oppose it now will change their mind? Well, we've seen uh, public opinion shift already uh, over the course of the last uh, year or so, and my hope is that uh, it will continue to shift in the same direction that it has been. Um, you know, you're never going to get 100% consensus. But make no mistake, uh, commitment to having a genuine, meaningful uh, consultation and accommodation with Indigenous communities has been in place all along and remains in place as we move forward. And, and a desire to protect the environment, um, both in terms of uh, its, its impact on emissions as well as the day-to-day -day environmental concerns around the pipeline, remain front and centre. Uh, for our government, I'm pretty sure the federal government and of course we know the BC government so that will continue that work will continue as well. Okay. Um, Premier, what does the change in ownership mean for the future of Bill 12 and how this government may or may not use it? Well, I think that uh, because the crisis is, has um, has uh, passed, at least for now, you know, and let us hope that it is that case indefinitely. But uh, you know, I don't I don't know that we're going to be looking to uh, to uh, uh, exercise it this you know in in the very near future. But you know, it it is a bill that uh, gives us authority to to uh, engage in a number of different strategies to maximize our resources in the best interests of Albertans. So it's a bill that needed to be passed and needed to be uh, there for us and so we still have it and uh, and uh, you know it, it remains something that we would consider using sh should it become something that's necessary for us to maximize our resources. But could you use it if the federal government owns the pipeline? Uh, well, quite honestly, the bill doesn't just uh, look at that one pipeline. It looks at a number of different pipelines. Sure, uh, but, but and, for this pipeline particularly mm -hmm. in terms of BC. It's an interesting legal question. I'm not sure. I, I, I would argue that we could, but um, it's very possible that it would be limited in some part by that. Because you just said that, you know, having it as a federal project would override provincial. We did, but the, the way our legislation works, it's about permitting the shippers. It's not about uh, controlling uh, the pipeline per se. It's about uh, uh, the government of Alberta issuing permits to the shippers. And so because it it's dealing with the shippers who are moving a, a, a product that that we as Albertans own. Um, that's where the authority is is exerted, and so it probably wouldn't have the same implication. What's left now for Alberta to actually do? What do you do now? Well, as as we've said, we so we've announced that, uh, and, and we've articulated that Albertans will um, uh, contribute up to two billion dollars uh, in. Um, uh, indemnity that would be convertible to equity should it be needed. So of course what we need to do is uh, keep an eye on on that process, finalize that agreement um, and then keep an eye on that process and also um, uh, uh, yes and then can carry on in conversations with the federal government and there'll be more details uh, to be released about that in the coming days. And now that the federal government I suppose kind of owns the thing, um, if there is a spill, who's legally liable here? Will it be the federal government and taxpayers? Um, I suspect uh, that would be uh, quite true. Yep. Does that worry you? Uh, you know, I think that uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, oftentimes uh, we invest in those in, in, in both protection and cleanup uh, collectively anyway. But what we know is that uh, pipeline spills are, are, are less and less frequent, that the technology around new pipelines uh, is, is improving every day and the, and the likelihood of spill goes down. So just as with any kind of project, uh, there is, is risk, uh, the risk is very low here. We're going to take Laurent and then Bill and then we're going to go to the callers who are waiting on the phone. Those $4.5 billion, uh, billion dollars that Ottawa is paying today, is it a price for its failure to act earlier or may maybe stronger early in the process? Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, that's the, the amount that the federal government is spending and uh, our understanding is that that's a, a, a reasonably fair market value for, uh, for uh, the parts of Kinder Morgan that they are purchasing as well as uh, the investment that Kinder Morgan has already made to date in the pipeline. So I don't think that there's really any premium there. And at the end of the day, do not forget, this is a profitable uh, a profitable project and uh, it will make money <laughs> and you know we've spent uh, you know people have been wondering 
what we were doing since April 8th. And a lot of that, what was leading us to this point was the uh, very uh, rigorous due diligence that both the government of Alberta and the government of Canada were doing to dig into uh, the, 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 um, the nuts and bolts of the project to make sure that uh, we were getting the deal we thought we were. And to be clear, it is still a very commercially viable deal. You're adding two billion or potentially two billion. How worried are you that it will impact uh, Alberta credit rating in the future? Oh, not at all. First of all, as we said, the it, it is up to two billion. It's very possible we might not ever spend a cent of it. That's the first point to bear in mind. Secondly, uh, it's money that is paid once oil starts flowing, um, and and uh, and and the uh, the return and the bump to uh, our revenue is 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 received. And and thirdly, of course, it's convertible to equity. Uh, so we have an ownership stake in what I just described is a, a very commercially viable uh, project. So this should have uh, no negative effect on our on our uh, credit rating. And in fact, the uh, 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 certainty of the Trans Mountain being uh, built ought to be uh, well, well regarded by investors. Bill? Sorry, one more question on the up to $2 billion. Mm -hmm. Who are you indemnifying? Is it the federal government that the government of Alberta will in basically insure on this project? Well, the, the government of Canada is also uh, uh, looking at putting aside uh, a certain amount of uh, additional money should the cost of construction uh, go up. And then we are also looking at doing that. Um, so it's just a question of natural cost uh, escalation that sometimes occurs. But the point being is that we are not the government of Alberta, the people of Alberta, are not in any way subsidizing. What we are doing is we are getting value for money. I guess the, the question is, if this project is such a sure moneymaker, why does it need indemnity? Why does the government of Alberta need to indemnify it? And the, the second part of that question is, once that converts to equity, mm -hmm. uh, once you sell this pipeline or the federal government sells it, does Alberta get a chunk of that sale price? Uh, absolutely. That's that's what converting to equity means. Yes. If we choose to sell our piece, um, we, we we may or may not at the time. Um, but uh, no, I mean, the, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, big projects like this, like any like any project, sometimes the price goes up, sometimes it doesn't. But um, either way, what this does is this uh, ensures that um, uh, Albertans have a stake in it and uh, it ensures that it gets done. And uh, there's a time limit attached to uh, w when that um, indemnity would be provided so that uh, we can further assure that it's done in a timely way.